Serious, what was the worst change in a person you saw at your high school reunion? Worst change I ever saw was no change at all. This is why I'll be avoiding reunions. That sheet's coming up way too soon. I think it was me. I was drunk one hour in because it was so awkward so I kept drinking. I went to high school with a disorganized but well-mannered kid who was pretty well known and not unpopular. He ended up dropping out of college to travel in Asia. Where he got into a bar fight. Hit someone. And badly injured him. Spent the rest of his college years in a nation, can't remember where, prison. When I saw him at our reunion. He had a massive face tattoo and was using every racial slur known to man. Loudly. As the evening wore on. It became apparent that the crazy fun party guy who seemed awesome at the beginning of the night was really the weepy alcoholic crying about having nothing left to live for. It was very depressing. Wow that's basically my new year's eve from last year. Now I can't enter that bar without someone asking about my mental health. In high school. There was a girl I envied because she was the stereotypical popular girl. Blonde hair. Blue eyes. Full of pep. She had dreams of going to medical school and being a pediatric cardiologist. She was a star in my dance class. The lead in the plays. She could sing. She took advanced placement classes. She was nice too. On our senior trip at the end of senior year. She told me about how she'd take speed to be up for days at a time. So she didn't have to sleep and could do so much. She never went to college. She looks really bad. Had a few babies. One of them born addicted to Drew Gus. I believe. She walks around town with her head down. All in black. She doesn't talk to anyone. It's really. Really sad honestly. Most handsome. Popular. Rich. Quarterback of the football team class president guy took a swan dive off a high floor of a hotel in front of his wife and kids a couple years back. Didn't see that one coming. Honestly. It was me. High school me was very animated. Social and skinny. 15 years later me was very withdrawn. Sad and obese. It's so strange. I never fantasized that I'd be the guy that people talked about having really gone downhill. I was always such a great student. I was active. I volunteered for things. I made art. A real type A person. Someone you'd want to be around. But I was the one people whispered about. And it really hurt. You'd think if someone was going through major depression. They would know. Right? I didn't. Without drawing this out. The good news is that I'm doing really great now. I'm skinny again. I'm social. I'm out there doing stuff. And I think I can count myself as someone people want to be around. It's kind of scary, having a personality, but exciting scary. Hopefully. At the 20 year reunion. The whispers will be different. Just had our 20th. Two people we could not locate but both are known to be drug addicts and homeless. I hope they are both doing okay because they were good kids who had a hard upbringing. How big was your graduating class? I know for a fact my class 5 year reunion was missing at least one person and I'm sure they didn't miss me. I wasn't even invited to various high school friends large weddings. I'd see their photos on Facebook of our peer group minus me. I'm definitely not going to be contacted for the 10 year class reunion. And I don't care. The majority of them were assholes to me anyway. Nobody likes the Asperger's kid. Nobody likes the Asperger's adult either. Well. Since I was the only one to show up for my 10 year reunion. It would be me. I got fat. I went to my 10. 15. And 20 year reunion. I think the worst change I saw was that quite a few still haven't changed. They were the same duck sticks they were in high school. It was almost cartoonish. Hanging on to who they were 10 or 20 years ago and still trying to be that guy or girl. I always ended up hanging out with a 4 or 5 of the nerds that had become amazingly funny. Interesting people. Normal people. And I look back with regret that that as a wannabe jock or wannabe trihead cool kid. I missed out on really knowing them. 
a friend of mine was super smart. He had skipped a couple of years. He went to college and majored in engineering. He had a great job. Lovely wife. And kids. A couple of years later he just dropped out of society. Moved to a tiny one room cabin off the grid. His wife thinks skipping grades and school messed him up. For most of his education he was 3 years younger than his classmates. Doesn't sound like much but at that age it's a big difference. He was smarter than the older kids and had no common interests. He didn't know many kids his own age and didn't have much in common with them either. Everyone expected big things out of him and the pressure finally got to him. He just got in his car after work one day and drove north. Didn't tell anyone. He married well. His wife was 100% supportive. He lived like a hermit for years while she raised and supported him and the kids. A couple of times a year he'd show up for a visit. About 10 years later he just showed up one day with all his things and moved back home. He works on a night crew cleaning movie theaters after hours. Everyone thought he was going to change the world. He was voted most likely to succeed. I think the expectations from everyone else led him to make decisions based on expectations and not what he wanted. Great guy. Amazing wife. Good kids. I still can't believe he's cleaning theaters at night. She brought her children. There were 12 of them. She was drunk. Really drunk. Like she turned up drunk. She didn't leave until 11 p.m. She left her baby in the bathroom. She used to be president of the chastity club. 100% serious. It's always the zero tolerance people that indulge the most. They were all pleasant. The surprise for me was two of the ultra stud guys now had some severe male pattern baldness. One guy tried to keep it going with an extremely thin forest on the top of his head, looked awful, the other guy just shaved it clean, looked great. In high school I was more than 100 pounds overweight. By my senior year I think I was the heaviest in my school of 1500. I was picked on like you might guess for my weight. I ended up losing all the weight and hit the gym hardcore. Building up a nice physique. At my 10 year it was crazy seeing how many of the skinny guys who had picked on me were now really overweight. So many dad bobs. This girl was one of the nicest people you'd ever meet. And not in that. Oh. I'll be nice to you so you are nice to me mindset. No. She was just a genuinely nice person to everyone. But she was really sheltered. Like she wasn't allowed at school dances. No dating. No makeup. Not that she needed it. She was freaking gorgeous. No drama cast parties. No field trips unless her parents were allowed to chaperone. No sleepovers. And all that jazz. Always dressed super modestly. My 10 year reunion was this year. And she was basically skeleton. The red nose crack who wore. I guess she went off to college and went absolutely wild with her newfound freedom. Went right over the deep end. And never climbed back. Just the sheer number who had kids straight out of school and live sheety lives. Felt really sorry for all those kids. Man it really doesn't matter how hot you were in high school. If you don't take care of yourself your looks will go to sheet. One of the take homes from this entire thread is it really doesn't matter how hot you were in high school. Period. Man reading this just makes me realize how lucky my class was. The girl I had a massive crush on is recently engaged to a guy who looks perfectly decent. She travels. Works as a nurse. And is somehow even hotter than she was in high school. My high school sweetheart is married to a guy who runs a respectable business and lives on the beach in Florida. My core group of best friends all keep in touch and we see each other regularly. I live with one of them. And she and her partner are getting married next year. The one dude we all thought would be a duck up joined the air force. Now works in private computer security. Has a wife and three kids and is doing great. One kid who was damn near murdered in a drug deal gone bad in high school got clean and teaches karate down in North Carolina. Even the townies are doing alright. Many of them hitched up with their high school sweethearts and are making it the best they can in the town they know and love, for whatever reason. We have of course several folks out of the closet. Including one who transitioned. 
but they all seem to be doing just fine. My 20th is coming up. So I'm sure to hear more stories. But the most messed up one that I know about now is about the guy who was friends with everybody in our class. He didn't really have a set clique and could fit in with any of them. And got along with everybody. A while back. He became a registered sex offender after he abused his neighbor's teenage kids. When I found out. I did some FB creeping and found out that a vast majority of his friends and likes are poor no related. Now. It seems like he's our class's dirty little secret, nobody talks about him. And though this is what I've done over 20 years mini biographies my classmates have put up on our FB page completely skipped him. Even classmates not on FB posted updates through proxies. I doubt we'll be seeing him at the reunion. Update, I got to thinking after this and realized something. Those of my class who didn't move away and still live within 20 miles of where they grew up, and also went to the various small colleges in a nearby larger town, are easily the most bigoted racist people in my class. And the junk they post on FB. Yesh. More reasons to be glad I left our totally white bread area, only time my school ever saw color was when we had foreign exchange students, and got to experience new things and meet new people. I didn't go to my 10 year reunion as I opted to take the get and get foe. But this involves pictures from that reunion a friend put up on Facebook. So. Years ago a friend and I ended up at a bar near where I grew up. It was a good hour drive from where I lived at the time. As the night progressed I hooked up with a good looking guy. Everything is going great but I kept thinking he looked familiar. I finally said I wanted to go outside to smoke and he came with. Under the better lighting outside in the smoking area I realized it was a guy I had gone to school with since kindergarten. He was the all-American. Football playing. Great looking. Well like type guy. We both laughed about how weird it was since I lived far away and he was actually visiting from out of state. I was no longer interested in continuing the evening together as I felt really creepy about it now. He was annoyed. But understood. A few months later I see pics from the reunion on Facebook. There was guy from school bar smiling next to his very pregnant wife. I really believed he was a better person than that. A girl I graduated with was a rich in high school. She became an even bigger rich post college. Our respective husbands graduated the same year. So we ran into each other at their reunion. She made eye contact with me. So I. Being a mature and forgiving 28 year old. Waved hello. She flipped me off and rolled her eyes at me for the rest of the night. Her husband cheated and left her a few months later. I didn't feel too bad overall. Suck it. Jen. Obviously she didn't make it to the reunion. But one of the sweetest and kindest girls in my class became a hooker. My best friend dated her 4 years in school. She got hooked on heroin started turning tricks to pay for it and was murdered the saddest part was seeing what it did to her mom and dad who are just wonderful people and raising her daughter that she never knew the bastards who held her dumped her in a ditch duck heroin man and duck anyone who sells that death sentence edit come to think of it i don't think i'll be attending any other reunions i've been to too many funerals of people i should be having a drink with instead our reunions are funerals now. And I've only been out of high school 15 years. Honestly. When my 10 year reunion came around. 4 years ago. I was too poor to attend. It was something like $50 to attend. And it had a 1920s dress up theme which I had nothing even remotely acceptable for. I had a friend offer to pay my way in. Saying I could pay him back whenever. But I felt too much of a burden to because I knew it would be too hard to pay him back without sacrificing meals. This was at a time when I couldn't afford the $20 a month in gas it would cost me to drive to my girlfriend's house. One town over. A couple times a month. So. While I wasn't rich in high school or anything, family was always poor until after I graduated. I really felt like a failure for not being able to attend and catch up see everyone from my graduating class. Since then. I've really advanced in my career field, resulting in pay raises. I've married that girlfriend. 
We got a house in a really nice neighborhood last fall. And we both have dependable vehicles that don't cost much and gas equals P. So this isn't really how much I've changed since high school. But it's how much I struggled during my last reunion compared to how much I've changed for the better since. I'm really looking forward to attending the next reunion. At my 10 year reunion no one had changed at all. Everyone was still the same. It's why I'm not going to my 20 year reunion this year because I never liked any of those people anyway. I'm not sure what was worse. The guys who were full fledged middle age at 28 or the guys who were still exactly the same. Trench coats and toffets included. From high school at 28. I wasn't invited. The girl organizing it didn't like me after her boyfriend defended me when he heard her making fun of me. Guess she still isn't over it. I didn't get invited to my 10 year high school reunion. Either. I joined the class in sophomore year. And it was a small school in an area in which most kids had known each other their whole lives in one capacity or another. It was very likely just an oversight. But I met be friends with some of the organizers and no one reached out for my address. Sorry that it was personal in your case. Sounds like the girl is really shitty. Ex-girlfriend of mine was murdered by the boyfriend that came after me. He used to beat the hell out of her and she always had an excuse. She finally made up her mind to leave him when he went to work the next day. And that night he healed her. Then blew his head off. Sucks. I really liked her and at one point thought we world had a future together. She looked like a cross between a Stepford wife and a Barbie. Perfect makeup. Blonde blowout. Pink money PD. The works. Six inch heels and minding to kids under two while her husband, who none of us knew, partied across the room and didn't lift a finger. No career. No friends. No hobbies other than TV and parenting. No social media. Email? Oh. I guess I have an email address. I never use it though. I don't know how to describe how eerie it was. She was always a quiet person but it was like all the personality had been sucked out of her. I really hope she's happy. I know some people enjoy the stay at home trophy wife thing but this was next level.